Hi, my name is Harrison Goodall and I'm with Breakout Studios and today we have another video for you in line of our wellness and mobility series um, coming from our studio in Tucson, Arizona. And today we're working on the lower back of how to get a little bit more increased mobility and flexibility in the lower back, whether you are trying to release some tension from your work day of sitting or you're trying to increase your flexibility um, for that yoga class or that next dance class you take with us. So here we go. So we're going to start here in a tabletop position with a nice flat spine, like you could drink some tea off of it. And as we inhale, we're going to drop our stomach, looking up towards the ceiling, arching our back. And as we exhale, we're going to curve. You're probably familiar with this. It's just called a cat-cow motion. So this is the cat. As we inhale, this is the cow. So follow your breath here for a few cat-cows, just warming up the back one vertebrae rolling at a time really opening our chest here in the cow position pushing the mat away in the cat position and come to a cow and hold looking up at the ceiling and exhale pushing back really arching through the back take a quick child's pose here forehead resting against the mat your knees can either be mat distance together or out wide and we're gonna roll forward here, bring our elbows to the ground, hands flat on the mat, feet together, and we're gonna pull in through the elbows, down through the shoulders, looking up at the ceiling, really pressing in through our lower back here, so our hips are squared against the rat, a ground, and through pressing through our hips and pulling through our elbows, we're able to get a stretch here. It might feel like a little back cramp, that is okay, that is what we're going for in the sphinx position here. So take a few breaths. Pull those elbows in closer. Open that chest up towards the ceiling a little bit more. And if you're feeling ready, go ahead and push through your arms. Bring your chest a little bit higher. And if you're not feeling quite warm enough yet, that is understandable. Please stay lower in Sphinx. The low back can take a while to warm up. And exhale, bringing it down to the mat, right cheek to the mat. We're going to grab our hands behind our back. Inhale, looking forward as our feet stay on the mat and our hands pull our shoulders and chest up off the mat. So really using the muscles on either side of your spine to lift your chest up. So we're trying to get our muscles warm here as well as stretching them. One more breath in and release, exhale down. Planting your hands underneath your shoulders and you're going to push up, keeping your elbows bent until your hips start to come off the mat and I want you to put them back on and stay about right here. So we're not going for that full pose you see your overachiever friend trying to do in yoga. We're going for safety. So we're making sure our shoulders are nice and engaged, rolled down the back. And we also want to make sure that our legs are rotating inward. So if you see your heels falling out like this, you want to rotate them back in towards each other, activating your glutes, which allow you to stretch your lower back safely. And you can push up a little bit more. And if you're feeling it, start to look gently over each shoulder. Just taking a little spinal twist in with this lumbar stretch. So our lumbar is one of the bendier regions forward and back of our spine. And our thoracic spine, the way the vertebrae are structured, makes it pretty hard to bend in this area. So it can get really tight um, and it's hard to move side to side. So we're just trying to loosen up some of that tension in the thoracic spine here. And pushing back into child's pose. Resting your forehead against the mat, so re reinforcing the curve of the cervical spine here, releasing the tension held in your shoulders, and bringing your knees to hip distance apart, which is about two fist, fist lengths. You're going to sit up straight, and I'm turning to curves so you can see me here. You're going to sit up tall my toes pushing into the mat for support and I'm going to push my hips forward opening my chest back and my head stays in line with my spine so it's not dropping but it's not looking up either it's just staying in a nice long line of my spine and I'm pushing my hips forward here so that if 
I was against a wall, everything until my waistband would stay against the wall and I would only start to curve around the belly button region and a little bit lower. If you're feeling comfortable here, you can come into full Ustrasana pose, which means camel pose, and opening the chest up. Alternatively, you can sit on your heels, grabbing your heels, and push your hips forward, holding here for a few more breaths. And if you're feeling comfortable, you can lift one arm up and backstroke it, switching your hands. So this requires um, some already cultivated stability and mobility in the lower back. So if this is the first step on your journey to that, let's maybe not try it today. Just hold in that camel position. And take full camel for two more breaths. And release. Come in to sit on your heels. Roll your shoulders back a few times, releasing any tension you might have built up in your shoulders or your neck. And coming back into child's pose for one breath. Coming back up into tabletop, take a few more cat cows here. Inhale to cow. Exhale to cat. Inhale. Exhale. And now what we're going to want to do is we're going to walk our hands out. I'll slide a little back so I stay in the frame. We're going to walk our hands out. We're going to keep our glutes directly over our knees. And we're going to bring our chin and hopefully our chest to the ground coming into puppy pose here. So I'm looking forward. And if you need a little extra stretch, you can put blocks under your hands or come onto your fingertips. Most importantly though, keep those hips over those knees so I'm not all the way out here or back here, but I'm right over my knees. A few more breaths here. Slowly rolling up, coming back into tabletop, lift your left arm up towards the sky, taking a spinal twist, thread it underneath your right shoulder, bringing your left cheek to the ground, taking a twist here, and if you need, I'll take it towards you, if you need any extra torsional force here, you can straighten your left or your right leg opening that hip a little bit, or you can keep it off the ground. You can also stay right here. And inhale, coming back up to tabletop. Exhale, bringing that right arm underneath the left, bringing the right cheek to the floor and taking that twist with the option to straighten that left leg. Two more breaths here. Coming back to your tabletop position and take one more cow on a long inhale and one more cat on a long exhale. So you can either take an extended child's pose here. I'd recommend feet together, knees about mat distance apart, Relaxing here, or if you're looking for a little extra lower back mobility, it's a good idea to loosen up our hips. Um, as all gymnasts and dancers know, this hub region of our bodies, the hips, glutes, um, and core, are all integral to our mobility in any type of movement. So if you're looking to take a little hip stretch here, we can come into frog. So I like the version where I keep my ankles and my knees in one line, come down to my elbows, and then I push back as much as I can. So take this for about one to two more minutes if you're looking to be all loosey-goosey, limber, and ready to dance.